Hey everybody, Jordan Corbeck here, and this is Mark Lucy. Uh, so Mark, what are you? What are we doing today? Okay, so uh, one of our customers has just sent in a Rad Eye G2010 Gamma uh, Gamma Survey Meter, and we want to show you how to repair one. And in this case, the issue that has gone wrong with it is the customer has dropped it, and the pancake tube has busted. So we are going to replace it with a new LND7311 pancake tube. That's pretty much all the issues. Neater still works. Okay, that'll, that'll be interesting. Well, uh, let's go on and uh, show how okay. we repair it. Fantastic. Jordan has gone off into the salesman room because he has to be in there uh, pretty much at all times to make sure that no one calls. But I am going to be on call with him this whole time in case he has anything that he needs to point out about the meters we are talking about. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, call him right now. Hello. Is this uh? Yes, it's Mark. All right, uh, let's uh, go ahead and get to this. Uh, just as a side note, you need to explain like what meters you're using and what they do. Yes, okay, so the Rad IG2010 is basically just your ordinary gamma survey meter. It's very similar to just the Rad IG10, and the Rad IG10 has a GM tube in it, and the Rad IG2010 has this ultra sensitive uh, pancake detector in it, so it's capable of detecting alpha, beta, gamma, uh, but this ambient equivalent filter here blocks the alpha and beta, so it's only a gamma survey meter. It has the same detector though as the Rad IB20. ER, and uh, this one here is actually capable of detecting alpha, beta, gamma. It has, you see it has this mesh window here. So this can be used for contamination surveys. This is more for dose ray surveys. Or if you need a screwdriver. I got one. So let's get right to work. What, what we're going to do is we're going to turn the instrument over here. And we are going to remove the uh, rubber boot here, which is just for protection of the detector, I guess. Looks like uh, the customer has uh, bought this with a missing screw in there. Hey Mark, you need to check that he didn't leave any presents in the battery compartment for us. I already have. So I'm going to get right to work here unscrewing. All the screws are out, so now we will just remove the main, the main metal plate here, and we will remove the ambient equivalent filter. And it's this right here that gives the unit the ability to measure dose rates. So you can see the um, frame right here, which the screws go into. It's a bit stripped. Uh, the third screw or the fourth screw hole isn't here, and this screw is uh, really really stripped badly, but it's okay. Hey Mark, you need to call the customer and make sure he doesn't want that replaced. <sighs> He's the salesman, that's his job. Hey, how are you doing? Just fine. So we opened up your Rad IG2010 that you sent us, and we've encountered a problem. What? Uh, the, the screw, the plate that the screws go into to hold the instrument, the back of it on, uh, the, the, the holder is stripped. The fourth socket is in entirely missing. And we don't know, like, do you want us to replace that or do you want us to, like, uh, not do that? Well, how much would it cost? Oh, gosh, I have no idea how much that would cost. A lot. How much so far? Uh, so far, when you're looking at about 380 I would think. I don't know for sure, though. I'll have to um, talk to J Jordan about that. I think that's too much. I can't afford to add any more to that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Okay, so now that he, I know he doesn't want the screw holder replaced, I'm just gonna move on taking it apart. So this right here is the LMD7311, right here that is cracked. So you can see it goes in, just the, the connector goes in this hole, and then this right here is the holder for it. Uh, I can definitely see a small crack on the mica window, so this is gonna be totally useless. Hey, Jordan, I need a new tube. Give me just a second. All right, I'm on my way. Here. Thanks. No problem. So now all I have to do is take this new tube that Jordan gave me 
and insert it in there. And it's spring loaded, but it is really hard to get in there. I almost have it. There we go. So the new tube fits perfectly in there, but now I have to solder the new joint on there. Okay, that tube now ain't going nowhere. Hey, uh, Mark, you might want to replace those screws. Those could be struck, too. I am. Let's see. Goes in there well. Okay, so the next thing I gotta do is just put the filter back on right there. Let's see, slip the rubber back up there and uh, attach it in there and through that screw and voila. Now it's almost ready to send back to the customer. You have to perform a cesium-137 calibration procedure before you send it back to him now. Now for calibration, the first thing I'm going to have to do is test beta response, and here's the strontium 90 source for that. So I'm just going to slide that under there. I'm not really getting an abnormal reading. Okay, now for the initial calibration, here's cesium-137 source. And it's responding, so the meter is working. Alright, just calibrated it for this filter. Now we need to make sure the controls work. The very polite customer has actually sent us some video of unboxing the Rad IG 2010 after it was repaired, and this is uh, the video that he sent us.